Good morning, AP Physics 1 class. This is the beginning of a new kind of way to teach AP Physics. I'm recording videos. You'll be doing homework. You'll be taking pictures of that homework and emailing it to me. You'll be taking tests uh, through Blackboard. And uh, your first test is the one that you were going to take the Friday before spring break, but we didn't have school that day. That test is now scheduled for this Wednesday. Um, and we'll talk more about that as it approaches. But let me explain that even though school said we were starting classes on Wednesday of this week, we, AP Physics 1, are starting on Monday, March 23rd. Spring break ended last week, and it is now a new uh, week of school, and we lost some time before spring break, and we don't need to get further behind. Uh, as far as we know now, everything's still going to happen at the end of the year in terms of the AP exam. The College Board has said they will make sure that the AP exams do happen. You will get a chance to get that college credit. So we, I've got to keep teaching you. We have this one last unit to cover. We need a test over Chapter 18, which again will be Wednesday on Blackboard. You'll take it at home. But for now, we're going to go into the new unit on the electric current, Chapter 20. It's the last unit we have to cover. Um, if you go to Blackboard, your AP Physics 1 class, and click on Topics, probably some other teachers have used Topics. You may be familiar with it, but I never have. Anyway, right now, under Topics, there is a topic, and there's only one if you click on that one. Uh, there's a picture, I think, of some lightning, which is current electricity. It's what this unit's about. And week one. Under week one will be all of the assignments, uh, links to the videos. Um, everything will be there that you that, to tell you what to do and when it's due. Um, so that's your information is topics in Blackboard. I'm sorry we're having to do it this way. I truly am. I miss seeing you. It's, it's pretty weird in my house, standing in front of a whiteboard that I borrowed from Mr. Campbell, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. It, I have brought this to my home um, so I can teach. And uh, I believe it's going to work out. Hopefully, we'll get back together again before the school year ends. We'll just see. All right, let's begin chapter 20, and I'm going to erase the board and pause it while I do that. All right, we're going to begin our discussion of electric current by talking about this term. Now, there are three terms on the board, but they all mean the same thing. Uh, potential. Voltage. Electromotive force. When you read the first section of chapter 20, which you will be doing, uh, you'll see that term, electromotive force. But all three of these terms mean the same thing. They're all symbolized by a capital V. That V comes from the word voltage. Uh, so you, if you see that word or that word or this term, you need to realize we're talking about the same thing. Now, what is voltage or potential? Well, the unit for measuring it is the volt. And the symbol for volt is that same capital V. That's the symbol for volts. Um, the, the definition equation for voltage is U over Q. Now, what does that mean? U, you might guess, is potential energy. Q, you would guess, is the charge. So here's the situation. If I have a battery here, let's say it's a nine volt battery, like this. There's a positive terminal and a negative terminal on that nine volt battery. The positive terminal then is connected, let's say, to a metal plate. 
and the negative terminal is connected by a wire to a metal plate. And those two plates are held up opposite each other. Well, this positive terminal is going to place positive charge on that plate. The negative terminal will place negative charge on that plate. So if this really is a nine volt battery, there's a potential difference between these plates of nine volts. Well, still, what does that mean? There's a potential difference of nine volts. Well, that means if I took a positively charged ping pong ball and placed it there, it's positively charged. We talked about this in chapter 18. Some, someone removed electrons from the ping pong ball, so the ball itself is positive. If you place it there, you can tell it's going to be repelled by this positive plate and it's going to be attracted by that positive plate. So if I hold it there, it's in a position where if I just let go of it, it's going to move. Now we call that potential energy. Just like if I take a baseball, this happens to be a baseball signed by the Atlanta Braves. And yep, there's my friend Bobby Cox who signed it. If I take this baseball and and hold it here, it's in a position where gravity could make it move. If I let go of it, it, it falls. Now we've talked about potential energy due to gravity. This is potential energy, U, potential energy, due to an electric field, not a gravitational field like we have here. Uh, uh, there's an electric field. Now we're gonna talk a lot more about electric fields in physics too, but to understand voltage, you need to realize this particle has potential energy. And if I divide that by the amount of charge, Q, that's on the ping pong ball, I get the voltage. All right, let's say this, this ping pong ball has 20 volts, I'm sorry, 20 coulombs of charge, positive 20. And there's another one up here that has, it's positive, but it only has 10 coulombs of charge. The Potential V is the same for both because that is nine volts from the battery. Potential difference between the plates is nine, so V is nine. Therefore, the V is the same. The one with a greater charge must have greater potential energy because they're gonna divide out to be the same thing. Now, you're not going to have to do any of this math. I don't think this equation you will need to, to solve any problems I don't believe it is on your equation sheet. Um, let me check. No, it isn't. Um, I'm just explaining what voltage is because we're gonna use that term voltage or potential or electromotive force. Again, they all mean the same thing. In fact, let me point out, sometimes you see EMF as a symbol for electromotive force, but we're gonna use that term. Therefore, I'm explaining to you what it is. It's U over Q. It's the amount of potential energy in joules per coulomb of charge that exists in this situation. Now, this is going to lead us to our next term, because if I let go of the particle, it's going to move to the right. Charge that moves through space or through a material is called current. That's what current electricity is. When charge when charge moves from one place to another, we call that electric current. A bolt of lightning is electric current. You'll see in the picture when you go to topics, uh, charge moves from a cloud to the earth, and that's a bolt of lightning. That's current electricity. All right. Um, that's V. That's all of these terms. Now, hold on. Let me say one more thing before I leave these terms about electromotive force, EMF, it isn't a real force. It's a, it's a bad term. We shouldn't even be using it because forces are measured in newtons. You know what force is. We spent a lot of time talking about it uh, earlier in the school year. This is not a force. This is energy per, per coulomb of charge. It's not a force. It's called force because sometimes it seems to act like a force because it can make the, the ping pong ball move. And so because it makes the ping pong ball move, someone a long time ago thought we should call it electromotive force. And it can make a charged particle move, but it's not a force.
All right, just letting you know, the unit for that is still the volt, not newtons. All right, so here's our first term. And all three of these, uh, all three of these right here, there's the unit. All three of these terms mean the same thing. They're all symbolized by a capital V. And the unit is also symbolized by a capital V, so don't get that mixed up. This is the quantity, voltage, or potential. This is the unit, the volt. And that leads us to our second term, current, which I mentioned a moment ago. When charge moves, that's what current is, current electricity. The symbol for current is the letter I. Uh, I for current. Hope you're okay with that. The unit for current electricity is the ampere. It's named after Andre Ampere. So the symbol for it is a capital A. Sometimes it's shortened to just amps. Amps of current. All right. Well, what is an amp of current? The mathematical definition for current is Q over time. In other words, it's the amount of charge, coulombs, that pass through a space in a given time. How many coulombs pass each second? That would be current. If, for example, if one coulomb went through a wire, let's say, every one second, that would be one amp of current. Okay, I'm explaining the definition. This, you do need to know, it is on the equation sheet. Current is, is coulombs per second. An amp is a coulomb per second. The amount of charge it passes through the wire each second is the current. Now let me explain this to you in terms of a picture. I have up here a pump and out of the pump is a pipe and water is going to be pumped from this pipe um, upward because water doesn't flow up, water flows down. So if it's going to go up, there has to be a force pushing it up. That's what the pump does. And so the pump forces water up through the pipe and then the pipe moves, or I'm sorry, the water moves through the pipe and somewhere over here, it gets dumped onto a big wheel where the water makes the wheel turn and turning the wheel does some work. And then the water ends up back down here again uh, at the bottom of the wheel where it feeds back into the pipe and, uh, and the pipe back to the pump, uh, pump, P-U-M-P, there you go, and the pump sends it back up again. This is very similar to what an electric circuit does. Instead of the pump, we have a battery. The battery acts like a pump. This actually produces force in Newtons, whereas the battery produces electromotive force or potential difference, potential difference between the terminals of the battery. One terminal is high and the other is low, positive and negative. In this case, though, when uh, the water leaves the pump, it has a lot of potential energy because there was force added to it. When the when the current leaves the positive terminal and it passes through the wire, all right, this is charge per second moving through the wire and it comes across something where it needs to do some work, like it hits a light bulb and it makes it shine and then it comes back down. It has lost all of its energy and it comes back down where the battery charges it back up again. And so out comes charge with plenty of potential it leaves the high potential positive terminal has lots of potential energy which it turns into light and heat that's energy and so when it leaves the bulb it's all out of energy it gave it all to the bulb and so now this really low uh, current comes back to the to the low potential negative terminal and the whole thing starts over again I'm comparing an electric circuit where charge flows through wires to this water circuit where a pump forces water through pipes. It does some work, like the current does some work to, to make the light come on, and then it comes back down where it has to be given new energy so that it can leave the pump with energy again to do some more work. All right.
this is always what we're going to be talking about in chapter 20 is this circuit here. There's a battery providing voltage or electro uh, motive force, potential difference between the plates, and because of that you get current that passes through a wire charged per time. Now there's one final term we need to mention in relation to this, um, and that is what about what about the wheel, the water wheel? That's analogous to my light bulb. That's where the energy gets used up. So what do we call that? What do we call the light bulb and this electric circuit? We call it a resistor. And therefore, there is a concept called resistance. I'm going to write that. Resistance is symbolized by the capital letter R, R for resistance. The light bulb is, is a thing, and we would call it a resistor. Resistance is what it has. Just like the water wheel slows down the water. The water hits it, and the water does work on it to make it move, turn, rotate. Um, but the, the wheel slows it down. Well, a resistor does the same thing. It doesn't technically slow it down, but it takes the energy out of it. So the energy that the current had leaving the battery full of energy gets used up. Just like this energy gets used up as it falls, and, and by the time it is finished doing its work, it's down here, it's all out of energy because it has fallen as low as it's going to go. Potential energy if it's back to zero. All right. Resistance is what we're talking about then. Um, the unit for resistance is the Ohm, O-H-M. Yeah, that was a person's name, George Ohm. And the symbol for the ohm is not an O. You might want it to be an O for ohm, but O looks like a zero and it just gets confusing. You wouldn't want to say there are 20 ohms and put a zero, put an O after the number 20. It would just be confusing. So someone in physics a long time ago decided to use the Greek letter omega to represent the ohm. That's a capital omega. It looks kind of like a horseshoe. Uh, don't know. Okay. That's the unit for resistance. And resistance is what it sounds like. It's, it's the thing in the circuit that uses up the energy. It resists the, the current, uh, makes it hard for the current to go through, and the current runs out of energy just fighting its way through that thing. Resistance. Okay. These are the three terms involved in an electric circuit. There has to be, there has to be potential difference or else the current won't flow because current flows from high potential to low. There has to be then current and there has to be a resistor for it to use up its energy. All right, let's talk about that. I'm going to erase the board. All right, so far you have this equation that I is Q over T. You can see that current is directly proportional to the amount of charge, inversely proportional to the time. So yeah, if it's if it takes more time to get that much charge through, it's going to be less current, slower. All right. So that's one equation you have. Let's move on to the next one we're about to learn that involves these three things, current and potential and resistance. We have a lot more to say about resistance, but let's hang on to that. Do you think current, the amount of current in this circuit, here's the circuit again, there's a battery, there's something that where the work is done, and the wires that connect the whole thing. Do you think the amount of current flowing through these wires is directly proportional or inversely proportional to the potential V? V. Should it be this or should it be this? All right. Austin, what do you think? Just say one or the other, Austin. Which one? Yes, you are correct. Current is directly proportional to voltage. Um, 
greater voltage, you know, a 12 volt battery would put more current through the wires than a nine volt battery. And that should be logical, a greater potential difference. Well, that leads me to, to want to answer the question before I finish deriving this equation, let's answer the question, what causes current? Why does current electricity flow at all? What causes current? I'm going to go back and try that again. The cause of current. Hey, I hope you're taking notes and paying attention and learning as much as you can. Um, if you have questions throughout the lecture, please ask. Email me a question. I, I'm reading my emails from 8 to 3 every day. Um, I will read your email if you send it to me from 8 to 3. If it's after 3, then I'll read it the next morning at 8. Okay. What is the cause of current? Why does it flow? Here's the rule. Charge, which is, you know, charge per unit time, is current. Charge naturally flows. You don't have to do anything to it. It will do this naturally. Charge flows from high potential. I'm going to use the letter V there. We remember that means potential. To lower potential. It does that naturally. Just like when I had the two parallel bars and one was positive and one was negative and if you place the positive ping pong ball there you don't have to do anything but let go of it it's going to move from the positive plate to the negative plate well well current electricity does the same thing it will move from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery it will flow that way without you having to do anything it is naturally drawn toward the lower potential it leaves the high potential and goes to the lower, which is high, and which is low, well, positive is always going to be higher than negative. You can remember it that way. So the current always moves in the direction from high to low. And because of that, uh, well, that is a cause of, of the convention in terms of current is to think always in terms of positive charge. Current is positive. I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Current, it, current is positive. It's always considered to be positive charge. You can actually think of it either way, but at some point scientists said we need to agree on which way we think about it. And so we're thinking of positive charge, which would be repelled by the positive terminal and attracted to the negative terminal. You can think of it that way if you remember current is positive. So for all practical purposes from here on out current will be considered positive charge moving from high to low potential. That's what causes current to flow and as it flows it can do work. All right back to my equation I am now deriving over here current is directly proportional to the potential difference, V. What do you think then, here, that's the one that's correct. What do you think then, um, Nate, what do you think about current and resistance R? If I increase the amount of resistance in the light bulb, would that produce greater current or less current? Is it a direct proportion or an inverse proportion? Nate, what do you think? You are correct. It is an inverse proportion. That's true, Nate. Uh, so this relationship exists. Greater resistance, it, look at the word resistance. If you increase resistance, it makes it harder to current uh, for current to flow. Uh, that should be logical just thinking about the definition of the word resistance. It, it's something that resists or makes it more difficult. Well, greater resistance would be less current. So this relationship is true. If I put these two proportions together into an equation, I get 
this. I equals V over R, which is on your equation sheet also. Both of these equations in the boxes are on your equation sheet. Now, I learned this equation 100 years ago as V equals IR. You cross multiply there, you get V equals IR. And that's the way I'll probably write it on the board when I'm talking to you about, about this equation. But, but here, really, I agree with the college board. This one makes more sense because you can see that the relationships we just talked about up here, that I is directly proportional to V, but inversely proportional to R. You can see that very quickly looking at this version of the equation. I just learned that one, and I use that one a lot. So either one, they're the same thing, and they have a name. This equation has a name. It's, it's a law, and it's called Ohm's Law. I will refer to it as Ohm's Law many times. When I say Ohm's Law, I'm thinking V equals IR, or I equals V over R, same thing. Um, and again, it's named after George Ohm. All right. Now let's, let's talk about these three things and what depends on what. And then we're going to specifically center on resistance for a moment. Uh, the V depends on the battery, the source. The source of the current is the potential difference. Current flows from high to low potential. So V depends on the battery. V does not depend on anything else. R, R depends on the resistor which in my drawing was a light bulb. It's something that uses up the energy and R depends on that. R does not depend on the battery, V does. I is the variable, it's the current, but it depends on V and R. So the, true, the only true variable is I. You need to learn that V depends on the battery, R depends on the resistor. So if I come in and say, hey, I've changed the battery, now it's twice as many volts. What happens to R? Well, nothing, unless you change the resistor. Nothing happens to R. But twice as many volts will give you twice as many amps. Um, okay, so you know what depends on what. Now, what about the resistor? The resistor determines R, how many ohms would go into this equation if you're using it, the resistance R. And so let's talk about what that means, what about the resistor gives it greater resistance or less resistance? Well, one thing you might think, well, you tell me, what's one thing that, that really matters? What do you think, Natalie? What's one thing that matters? Yeah, what, what, what the wire is made of or what, wherever the current's flowing, it's flowing through something, what is it made of? Some things are really good conductors and some are not. And so there is a there is a term called resistivity, not resistance, resistivity. And the symbol for resistivity is the Greek letter rho, R-H-O, rho, Greek letter for resistivity, because we've already used an R. But this is a constant for the material. And in your textbook on page 603, you'll see it when you're reading. Um, it's, it's in the third section, I believe, chapter 20. There is a chart. There's a table of various, various materials and what their resistivity is. And the bigger the number, the more resistance it has. And so you'll see some numbers that are uh, quite different there. Um, aluminum, for example, has a number that's 2.82 times 10 to the negative 8. Whereas... Uh, Wood has a number that's 3 times 10 to the 10th. A big difference uh, between a, a conductor. A conductor might have a resistivity of 10 to the negative 8, and an insulator like wood might have a number that's 10 to the 8. Uh, so a tremendous difference in their resistivity. But that number has to do with what the material is made of. Some materials allow current to flow through easily and some don't. Conductors do, insulators don't. All right, the other thing that matters is, well, how thick is the wire? 
That's right, Yuhan. How thick is the wire? That's what I was going to ask. And um, that would be here. R is directly proportional to rho. I, I think I just made a backwards rho. Wow. Okay. There. Uh, but it is, uh, Yuhan, which one is, is R directly proportional or inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire? That's how, that would be how thick it is. If it's, that's right, if it's thicker, there's more room for, um, there's, there's more room for charge to flow, so it would be easier, less resistance. It's an inverse proportion. A now is for the area, that's cross-sectional area or thickness of the wire. Okay, here's a wire. There, there's the area of that circle. This is a, the, so that's the cross-sectional area of the wire. And the thicker it is, the more room for charge to flow. So bigger area would be less resistance. If it's easier, there's less resistance, the inverse proportion. All right, and the other thing that matters, then you would guess probably, uh, you would guess Kaylee is what? Did you think of, right, how long the wire is, length. Now, is it directly proportional or inversely proportional to the length? It is correct, a direct proportional to the length. If you put those together, you get R, resistance, is rho L over A. That becomes an important equation for resistance because this explains that R really depends on the resistor. What about the resistor? Well, it's rho, what the resistor is made of. You can look that up on page 603. L, the length of the wire, longer wire would have greater resistance, has farther to go, but inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area, uh, the, the thicker it is, the greater area would be less resistance. That's what about the wire. Everything over here is about the wire that the current's flowing through. Material, length, thickness. Okay, so that's how you can calculate R. If you use SI units for all of these, you'll get ohms. And ohms can go over here and back into Ohm's law for R. And volts, divided by ohms will give you current in amps. All right, almost through. My plan is for uh, these videos to be about 30 minutes. This one's going to be a little longer, the first one, because we've got to cover four sections in the book, but we're almost through. It's already been 33 minutes. It'll be three or four more. All right, power is what we saw we talked about. Now, this is for an electric circuit. You already know that power is work divided by time or energy divided by time. Conservation of energy says instead of work, I can just put any kind of energy up there. Well, what if I put a U up there for potential energy? Power is potential energy divided by time. We talked at the beginning of this lesson today about V being U over Q. So U is QV. U is QV. So if I replace the U with QV, now look at this. This is going to blow you away, Jackson. Look at this. What's Q over 2, Jackson? <laughs> yeah, uh, Q over T. <laughs> Sorry. What's Q over T, Jackson? Right. That's current. Uh, that's right here. Q over T. So I can write power as IV. There's my equation for power being used up and in the electric circuit. The question could be worded, uh, how much power is dissipated by this light bulb? Well, it'd be the current times the potential difference around the bulb. Or it could be worded, uh, how much power is being used up? Or uh, in any way like that, um, if they're asking for power, you can get it I times V. 
and it comes out in watts, just like it did up here before, back when, in the fall when we were studying power as work divided by time. If I multiply amps times volts, I will get watts. Now, because of Ohm's law, though, I can replace some things. For example, I could replace the I there with V over R. If I do that, I would get power is equal to V squared over R. So that's another version, same thing. I just replaced the I with V over R. Uh, I could also replace the V with IR because V is equal to IR. So that if I did that, instead of VR right IR, I would get P is equal to I squared R. So here are actually three versions of the same equation. Uh, this one is the one that's on your equation sheet. But you can see how easy it is to get the other. So depending on what numbers you know, you can use any two of these three variables to calculate power. If you know I and R, use this one. V and R, use that one. V and I, use this one. So some of your homework, you'll get some questions about the power used up in a circuit. That's how you calculate that. All right, let me see what's left. All right, I'm going to mention a few things in the next lecture that goes back to these first four sections in, um, in chapter 20. Tomorrow, in the next lecture, I'll mention a few more things. But I've covered the big points in the first four sections. You should be able to do A and B in your syllabus. The syllabus itself, I believe, is in the topics. It's also under syllabus in Blackballing. You probably also have it on a piece of paper somewhere. But chapter 20, A and B, is the assignment. It tells you in topics that it's due by 11 a.m. Uh, the next day. So this is Monday the 23rd. You should have your homework done and send an email uh, to me with a picture of your homework written out on paper. Um, and I need to get that email by 11 a.m. Tuesday. And then the then Tuesday assignment will be due by 11 a.m. Wednesday and so on. Um, however, Wednesday is a test and tomorrow we'll talk more about that. It's a test or it goes back to chapter 18. Uh, so I'll mention a few things in tomorrow's lecture re reviewing that. Um, let me just say this is not ideal. Uh, I don't like talking to a camera when there are no students in front of me. Yeah, I, I know you, there really, there are no students in front of me. Um, and I apologize that we have to do that, but we do. This COVID-19 thing is serious. Uh, it doesn't kill everyone, but it does kill some. And it's very, very highly contagious. We don't know much about it, but we know it's contagious. And we have no tools to fight it other than quarantine. And that's what we're doing. However, school can't stop. I need to prepare you for the AP exam, and I'm going to work as hard as I can to do that. Please feel free to email me with questions, and I will do my best to either email you back or include an answer to your question in the next lecture. Um, but I'm going to be there for you as much as I possibly can. I know this is hard, and I am so proud of you guys for hanging in there, and I trust that you'll continue to work hard to finish out the school year. Thanks. I love all of you very much. See you next time. Bye.